Are you mad? My word, you're a dark horse. Hello everyone and welcome back. Last time, we saw Henry meet the mercenary band so Razik had recruited to help safeguard the roads. A band of bastards they were, but they were capable enough at chopping up bandits at the burnt out farmstead. But from the note they found, this wasn't an isolated incident, and so Radzik would need to know. God be with you, Henry. Congratulations on winning the tournament. I'm proud of you. Sir, I'm afraid I have some bad news. We came across a burnt-out farm near Merhoyed. Christ! It seems Pribislavitz wasn't the end of it. Now this is something else, sir. We found a shield there with a crest. A tricolour star on a blue field. I know that coat of arms, unfortunately. It's the House of Zul. There was a letter there, too. Show it to me. Although I think I already know what it will say. Unscrupulous beast. Mm -hmm. Cruelty and malevolence. Uh -huh. I challenge you to face me in a duel. Defend your honor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Aninomious wretch. Well, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Signed, Hagen Zul. As I expected, old grievances coming back to haunt me. This Sir Hagen wants to challenge you to a duel. Apparently he still hopes I will agree to this kind of outmoded solution to disputes. Surely you can't refuse a challenge to a duel. What about your honour? Henry, my boy, honour is a splendid thing and it should be held in high regard. But in time you'll learn that some matters are not so straightforward. Like this one? Yes. Like this one. The only reason Hagen is challenging me now is that he has a marked advantage. I've served as the royal hetman for the last 15 years and become a courtier. Hagen, meanwhile, was fighting in the Margraviate Wars in Moravia and elsewhere as a mercenary. Which of us do you think would win a duel? That's not honour, but an abuse of honour. Commonplace opportunism. I don't blame him for trying, but I'm not such a fool as to play by his rules. What happened between you and Sir Hagen? It began in the first year of King Wenceslas's reign. He sent me to resolve a dispute between the Zuls and a neighbouring house. It concerned land boundaries. The Zuls had refused to accept the ruling of the land court. His Majesty's position was a little shaky after his coronation. So a decision was made in the royal court to take radical action against any dissent in the kingdom. Since the Zul family was defying the king, we were obliged to punish them. Harshly, as the circumstances demanded, the head of the family, Hagen's father, was hanged, their castle razed to the ground and their property confiscated. So, they're out for vengeance. But you acted according to the law. Would it were that simple, lad? I was young and didn't realize the repercussions it would bring. For one thing, the king didn't use it to strengthen his position. On the contrary, he took less and less interest in such affairs, because he realized things would eventually sort themselves out. He promoted me to Royal Hetman, leaving him to pursue other interests. Secondly, my actions essentially created another band of robbers. When you strip a nobleman of his property, you can't expect him to take the begging. And thirdly, I wasn't aware at the time that the other party to the dispute was distantly related to me. Naturally, that made it look like I was acting in self-interest. If I'd known what I know today, I'd have been a lot more circumspect. Well, what are we going to do about this? You and Kuno's band will just have to deal with Hagen and prevent further mayhem. The longer he's marauding around these parts, the greater the chances that I'll finally have to succumb to his conditions. So you'd fight him, if it came to that? Let's hope it doesn't come to that. But maybe there's something else behind this challenge. Maybe it's coin he's after. Who knows? All right. Clearly, Hagen Zula has decided that this time of weakness, after Sigismund's human invasion, is the right time to press his claims. Just as clearly, he won't be leaving without some physical encouragement. Luckily, Sir Ratzig knew how to cultivate useful friendships. First, he'd gained safe haven in Ratai. And now he could call on troops to reinforce his own depleted manpower. It was a lesson that Henry took to heart. 
What do you think about this business with Hagen Zul? Well, I'm worried Kuno is underestimating Hagen. I was at the siege of Lansenbach with the both of them, so I know a thing or two about it. Hagen's got all these noble airs and graces. These knights are talk of honor and glory. Kuno reckons they're like lost lambs on the battlefield, and he's usually right. But that Hagen ain't no lamb. He's a cold-blooded killer, by all accounts. What do you think about this business with Hagen Zul? That's a very tricky matter, I can tell you. Them Zuls are well known among us mercenaries. Hagen and his two brothers fought in the Margraviate Wars. That's quite a feather to have in your cap. Well, on the other hand, they've got their weaknesses. Like what? They still like to think of themselves as high and mighty lords. Kuno got over that, thank Christ, and he treats us all like equals. You think Hagen's men have no great love for him? Well, I'd say they're running before his whip more than following his flag, if you understand me. Aye. I see what you're getting at. Have you thought about where to head next, Damien? Aye, Chief. Kuttenberg and Budweiser, I reckon. Bear men want to go to Brandenburg. Why's that? They say someone there owes them a pile of coin, and they'll share with us. Horse shit. They're the ones who owe a pile of coin, and that's why they want to get out of Bohemia. I'm telling you, Chief. One morning we'll wake up, and the bearmen will be gone. So what do you think about recruiting some more men? We could do with two or three more, all right. Another archer, someone who knows something about healing. Someone who can talk, that is. And replacements for the bearmen. That's why Kuttenberg makes sense. It's a silver mining town, and miners are hard as fucking nails. Some of them might be tempted to go crushing heads for silver instead of ore. Exactly. The town is full of Deutsches, so maybe that'll settle the bearman's yearning for Brandenburg. What do you think about this business with Hagen Zul? Hagen Zul? Who's that? That robber baron who's been pillaging Sir Radzig's estates. Didn't Kuno tell you? He did. But then he says a lot of things. Zul, Radzig, Sokol and Hinek of Kravan, Wenceslas, Sigismund. It all goes in one ear and out the other. What do I care? Ride somewhere, kill some fellas, have a drink and go to sleep. If you're lucky, it won't rain while you're at it. That's all. What do you think about this business with Hagen Zul? I'd say you and Sir Radzig are very fortunate to have Kuno on the job. He's a master at handling such matters. Is he? Why's that? Dealing with bastards like Hag and Zul demands both courage and sharp wits. It's not a commonplace combination, but Kuno has both in abundance. Ask you something. The group seem to hone their mercenary skills amongst themselves in their free time. What is it, Jakey? The Stone wants to talk with you, if you can call it that. Probably about that ring. What ring? Ah, no one told you about it. The fellas call it the Ring of Bakus. It's a kind of game we play. Kuno gave us this ring. It's just a worthless bauble. But when we're at the tavern, Kuno pays everything for the man who has the ring. So we steal the ring from each other and try to trick each other. Well, actually, just the others. They won't let me play. Kuno says I'm too young to get boozed up. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. But I don't have the ring, so why does the stone want to see me? He probably wants you to steal it from someone. Since you're new, the fellows will talk to you, and it won't be suspicious. All right. I'll have a word with them. What do you think about this business with Hagen Zul? Zul? Oh, I'd rather keep that to myself. But since you're the only one who's interested in my opinion, I'll tell you. I reckon Radzig's making a big mistake. I might not be grown up yet, but I've walked in these shoes long enough to know that asking a mercenary to do something for nothing is stupid. Wait, what are you trying to say? Uh, never mind. It's just a feeling I have. If Kuno heard me talking about it, he'd tan my hide. All right, we'll drop it then. It wasn't the most tasteful approach to Henry's mind, but it was one way to create some friendships within the band. Maybe they'd be more enthusiastic in taking on the bandits if they felt well towards him. Jakey sent me to you. Something about a ring? Mm-hmm. I suppose you want me to get it from someone? Mm -hmm. Who has it? <coughs> Does Dangler have it? Mm -hmm. Alright, how should I get it? Hey, 
I want the Ring of Bacchus. I heard you have it. So you come and ask me for it. Well, that's a novel approach. Well, you don't just have to steal it from each other. Why not play for it? No, I don't play dice. But we can duel for it. All right. Why not? I'll wager the ring, and you put up some groschen, all right? Sure. I'll wager that. Well, now it's something worth fighting for, so you better watch out. Murtka! Like giving it up. Well, at least I won't get so plastered next time. Uh, just watch how it doesn't get pinched. <laughs> I'll do that. Thanks. I got the ring from Dangler. Hmm. Yeah, well, I, uh, I suppose there's not much more either of us can say about it. Mm -mm. <coughs> uh, yeah, thanks to you too. Have you heard this one? This what? This joke, you blockhead. Come I'm asking here. if you heard I this joke. I want to ask you something. What joke? Y you haven't told me it yet. It's just a turn of phrase, for fuck's sake. If you're going to tell a joke, you say, Henry, Have you heard this one? Come here. Which one? How am I supposed to know which joke you mean? Because when you're talking to a normal person, you'll let you get on with telling the joke. Henry! I'm not stopping you. I want to have a word with you. Get on with it, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, so there was this priest who was always complaining about his teeth to everyone he met. One I want to day, talk to you. he was sitting in the alehouse, and this innkeeper asked him why he was so glum about. The priest says, My teeth are hanging loose. I'm not Rads afraid they'll all fall out. The innkeeper thinks about it and says, Father, my balls have been hanging loose for more than 30 Come years. Come here. And they haven't fallen something. out yet. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, I want to have a word with you. Radzig's man. What's it about, Stefan? Ah, Henry, the very man I wanted to see. I heard you got the ring from Dangler and gave it to the stone. Uh, maybe. Let's not beat around the bush. I could use your help too. I think the stone has had the ring long enough. If you get what I'm saying. I don't want to go rummaging in anyone's belongings. Not this dangerous lots, anyway. Nah, don't worry. I'll take care of that part. I need you to do something else. I want to steal the ring from the stone while he's asleep. But that fella sleeps with one eye open. He needs a little help with sleeping soundly. And I've got a feeling you're the kind of man who knows how to arrange that kind of thing. Sure. I'll bring you some sleeping potion. Great. I knew I could count on you. And if you happen to come across that ring, all the better. I've got that potion for you. A few drops in the stone's drink and he'll sleep like a baby. I hope not. Babies have a tendency to shut themselves and wake up screaming. I'd been to see Sir Radzik. So how did he take the news? Well, he wasn't exactly happy about it. I can well imagine. I wouldn't want the Zools plundering my estates either, if I had any. He wants us to carry on patrolling the area. There's nothing else for it. That makes sense. I don't think he'll come to us. So we'll just have to hope we run into him. I'd like to check out the big forest to the north, and then carry on via Ujits. Sure. Mount up then, and let's go.
Ah. Please, can we stop for a bit? My ass is aching, and I've such a thirst I could drink a moat dry. Same here. Now, what do you say, Chief? Not to worry. We'll re-choose it soon. We'll spend the night there. I heard they've got a peculiar priest there. <laughs> they say he drinks like the devil himself. <laughs> There's nothing strange about that. Every other man of the cloth is a swill pot. Or a lecher. Or both. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. Listen. Nothing to fear. We're with Sir Radzik, in a manner of speaking. What's the matter? These brigands came. The menfolk fled and left us there. They started pillaging the place, drinking whatever they could find and smashing things. I ran off, but the other girls... They... You've got to save them. Please, I beg you. Easy, lass. Drinking, you say? Aye, sir. They rolled the casks into the courtyard and started swilling like pigs from a trough. Well, as our old cook used to say, if you want to make a proper goulash, you should soak the meat in ale for a while to soften it first. Ah, let them get well soaked and then go and chop them up. Good thinking, Chief. But what about the girls? Those men, they, they were... Ah. I'm sure your friends won't be getting nothing they ain't had before. Well, unless they be nuns. <laughs> <laughs> Kuno was both pragmatic and ruthless, and more than ready to sell the girls out for advantage. Kuno, the girl's right. If we delay, her friends will pay the price for it. I appreciate your advice, Henry. But it's caution that'll keep you alive, not chivalrous deeds. Well, I did what I could. Have it your way, then. I will. And unless you want to rush to your grave, you should do the same. There was truth to Kuno's words. Henry couldn't deny that. Right. By now they'll all be drunk as lords. Who are you? Let's go! And if they wait, at least some of the bandits will be too drunk to take part in the battle. But at what cost? The purpose of the patrols wasn't to kill bandits, but to protect the people of the county. Who wants their back covered? My right arm is stiff since last night. Cover that side for me. It's all in the wrist, Dangler. <laughs> and best to take off your gauntlet first, so as not to do yourself an injury. Still, it's always good to have your helmet well polished before battle. <laughs> Thanks for the invaluable advice, brothers. I'll watch your right side then, yeah? Thanks, Jakey. Hey, fellas. Well, since it's so dark, why don't we just sneak in and take them down stealthily? <laughs> What's so fucking funny? That's not really our style, Sonny. Anyway, Jan stinks to high heaven. They'd smell him a mile off. And they'd hear your loudmouth blabbering a mile off, too. Fuck. <gasps> Wash up, brother. Heart in your mouth. Jesus, what the... <gasps> Fuck. It's a sign from God, better. A foretaste of what we'll do with the liquid loot we take from the foe. Kuno, the girl's right. If we delay, her Maybe Kuno still had a modicum of honor left in him after advice, all. Henry. Because Henry can convince him to follow his lead. Not chivalrous deeds. You promised Sir Radzig you protect his fiefdom, and that means his subjects too. Come on, it's not like their lives are in any real danger. Hagen's men just want a bit of fun. A bit of fun? Are you fucking serious? You know very well, Kuno, how innocent girls can end up after a bit of fun with animals like that. Well, I for one am not going to sit back and let it happen, even if I have to creep in there myself and try to rescue them. Oh, all right. It's not the smartest thing to do. But let's go and tackle those fuckers if that's how you want it. Good. 
Thanks. Right. We better try and save those girls from Hagen's brutes. Let's go! Either way, the bandits proved no match for Henry and Kuno's men. And afterwards, they set off to celebrate. Good work, Hans. So, where's those damsels we so gallantly rescued? They took their heels as soon as they saw the pit of you. Can't say I blame them. Fucking ingratitude. Well, at least the booze didn't run away. <laughs> Hi, booze will never let you down. <laughs> Finish off any drunken fuckers you find. The rest of you, let's sit and finish what these bastards started. Jan will want to fist fight Henry for money or just plain old fun. Think you can shake me? You want to have a scrap with me? Scrap? That's putting it in vulgar terms. I want to challenge you to an honorable bout of combat. <laughs> You've nothing better to do right now anyway. All right, but let's make it a bit more interesting. You're a man after my own heart. Tell you what, let's make it a lot more interesting. Well, a wager like that will bring a bit of excitement into it at least. You're very sure of yourself, ain't you? Well, you're not the only one, so let's do it. The Bevan brothers only respect force. So this was one way to gain it. Let's beat him so that he can't differentiate between the headache of the hangover and the one from your fist. The Stefan is doing as Stefan does and wants to fleece Henry of his hard-earned groschen. Up for a game? Always. I've got some nice little items to wager. What do you say? Well, that depends what you have. I've got a shield, a jupon and a very fine embroidered hat. The shield's got the Rickfeld crest, a nice piece, handles well, and tough enough to take quite a battery. Then I've got this combat jupon. Not only does it look good, but it'll help keep your skin in one piece. And then there's this noble hat. It's not a lot of use on the battlefield, but if you want to look elegant around town, it'll certainly make a big impression on folk. And the girls will be fading at your feet. I like the sound of that shield. I'll play you for that. All right, but what will you wager? You'll have to make it worth my while. After all, fine things like these here don't just grow on trees. There's a number of prizes to be had, but the shield is unique, and as Henry is riding with Kuna's group, it would be good to wear the emblem like the other members. Damn! Kuna also wants to celebrate his victory with Henry. It's obviously a ploy to pick at Henry's brain. Come and have a laugh with us. You're too serious. Dangler. Dangly Dangler. I like you the best out of the whole lot. I mean it. You hardly never even talk to me. Ever. But I still like you. I still like you. You're like... You're like a hero to me. You're like... You're like a big brother to me. Actually, you could even be my real brother. It's possible. You could be. You could be my brother. Listen. Could I call you brother? I'm gonna call you brother. Alright? If them Bermas can do it, so can we. Who gives a damn about... What anyone thinks. Right, Dangler? I mean, brother? Let them think. What they like. Right, brother? You like me too, don't you? Yeah. Of course you do. I like you too. Come and join us. If you don't want wine, you can always have some milk. Did I tell you about how St. Clair appeared to me? It was that time in Colleen. All white she was. Like she'd been rolling in flour. I wanted to ask her what kind of bread she baked. I figured maybe she liked sweet bread, seeing as how she didn't eat meat. But who knows? I always liked black bread. But when I went to executions, I always took a roll with me, with cheese or bacon. 
Like that time when they executed that timber rafter who was murdering people all around there? Or maybe it was that Jew with a limp they hang? No, the Jews in Colleen are well off, too well off. They have no need to go around killing people, uh, except Jesus. Maybe they poisoned a well. But that one over by St. Bartholomew's we used to sit there every day. I've noticed that. The water stank anyway. Ah, oh, the whole fucking elb stinks. Especially by the mill. But the mill maid's there. Jesus. How come mill maids are always so pretty? That's a funny thing. Because the mill hands. Now they were a pack of fuckers. And we all belonged to the Miller's Guild. They say the ugly girls jump into the mill race. So the wheel will mill them into pretty maids. I don't know about you, but I'd go with one of them girls, eh? I would. Young bodies, but experienced, you know? No fucking saints. Which reminds me, did I ever tell you about the time St. Clear appeared to me? Ah, fuck it. You're not listening anyway. You won't hear much. Eve's dropping from over there. Sit with us. There used to be this charlatan in Colleen lived in a house on the road to Brandy's. He claimed he could read people's minds. Then this other charlatan came to town and settled on the other side of the river, and he said he could read minds too. And I was thinking, if them two met up and started reading each other's thoughts, then actually, they'd be reading their own thoughts, right? See, because the other fella would be thinking, He'd be... Ugh. Ugh. Forget it. But sharing a beer or a dozen might help them forget any ill will they might have about not waiting to attack. There's good and bad answers, and it's up to Henry to be guarded in the topics he chooses to share with Kuno. Hey, left us some damn good booze here. And as my old man used to say, the fire of battle must be quenched. Of course, the only battle he was ever in was with Ma. But still, it fits. Anyway, I hope you'll drink with us. Sure. Why look a gift horse in the mouth? My words exactly. Me and the lads were just saying how we know nothing about you. Most of the folk around here have hardly been further than the village market. But you must have seen a thing or two. That I have. I suppose you heard about the raising of scallops. Aye, I heard. And Radzik told me you're from there. But that's probably not the kind of story to go with wine and good cheer. I've got a good one about something that happened in Scalitz. I'm not sure Scalitz is an entertaining topic. No, no, wait, you'll enjoy this one. Huh. <laughs> well, <clears throat> we had a German as a neighbour, a furrier he was, and he was always blabbering on about how Sigismund was the best thing for this country and how Wenceslas wasn't worth a damn. Me and my mates got fed up with this horse shit. After all, he was insulting our king, and we weren't going to put up with that. Regular patriots, eh? And as it happened, this Deutsch had just whitewashed his house. Lovely and white, pure as the driven snow. And next to it was a big pile of fresh manure. Ah, I think I see where this is going. Wait, though. His wife was at home, you see. So I went to her and said, Good wife, sorry to bother you, but your husband is in the tavern insulting the king. And she says, Oh, God above, the fool is drunk and spouting nonsense again. So she jumps up and off she goes to give him an ear bashing, leaving the coast clear for our operations. <laughs> I can just imagine it. Yeah, you should have seen it. How those shit pies stood out so prettily against that pure white background. And then the Deutsch's son turned up with his mates. <laughs> Naturally, there was a bit of a brawl. And then the catchpole turned up and we had to beat a tactical retreat. <laughs> Quite the general, aren't you? Tell us another. Do you know Talmberg? Oh, yeah, I do. It's that castle on the hill, not far from here. That's right. Sir Divish is the lord there. You might have heard he was locked up in his own castle for seven years by another lord he had some dispute with. I remember hearing something about that. How did he get out? His wife, Lady Stephanie, managed to get justice for him in the end with the help of the provincial council. Right. But I thought you were going to tell us something about yourself, Henry. I'm getting there. It's to do with the young lady, Stephanie. She took a liking to me and asked me to help her get some things for her cousin's wedding, which I did. And she was very, very 
grateful. So the lady was nice to you. That's a charming story. Not exactly bard material. No, you don't get it, Kuno. She was very grateful. What are you... No. Never. You and the lady of the castle. Yeah, it was a bit of a surprise for me, too. Are you mad? Did it cross your mind what her husband could do? No, I suppose. But I was caught up in the moment. Jesus, Henry. Let me give you a word of advice. We're not from here, so it doesn't matter much. But I wouldn't go telling that story around these parts. Of course not, don't worry. Tell us another. Have you heard of Sir Hans Capon? I heard his name mentioned in Colleen, in connection with some wenches, I recall. A young dandy, eh? Yeah, that's him. He's going to inherit Ratai once he comes of age. I run some errands for him now and again. Well, once we were at the bath together and his lordship wanted to seduce one of the bathmaids. Naturally, that's what the baths are for, among other things. Yeah, but with Sir Hans, nothing is ever straightforward. First, I had to play strip dice. <laughs> that's good. Did you win? Yeah, I did, but I had to strip myself anyway to get into the tub. Only, no sooner had I done so, than his lordship demanded wine from the castle cellars, which is a long fucking way from there. I reckon you're a man who can't resist a challenge. <laughs> if I'd been sober. I went all the way there and back in my undergarments, and no sooner was I back than he sent me to pick flowers for the girl from the castle gardens. <laughs> it's starting to sound like a fairy tale with three wishes. Well, actually, he probably did have a third wish, but he didn't get a chance to say it. How's that? Well, I got back only to find the girl's sweetheart, some guard called Arson Balls, well, that's what Sir Hans called him, trying to drown him in the bath. <laughs> drown a nobleman over a wench. That's Balls all right. Well, Sir Hans was naked and drunk, so he didn't look very noble. <laughs> anyway, I tackled this fella and saved Sir Hans from him. It could have all got out of hand, but it ended with only a few bruises. Sir Hans never got his way with the girl, though. All that trouble for nothing. <laughs> Tell us another. Once I met a very peculiar character in Sassau. He was selling amulets, relics, and all sorts of supposedly miraculous junk. Charlotte? You want to watch out for fellas like that? Indeed. But this charlatan took me on as an apprentice. The sorcerer's apprentice? You're having me on, right? No, no, it wasn't like that. He just wanted me to, um, acquire some things for him. Nothing too difficult, so I did it. What kind of things? Like a tooth from St. Procopius, for instance? What? Relics like that don't exactly grow on trees. Oh, of course. So instead, we settled for a tooth from some labourer called Procopius. So this fella was walking around with a mouthful of relics? <laughs> How did it end up? Well, in the end, the charlatan was driven out of town by an irate mob. I was lucky they didn't lynch me instead. Nobody likes a swindler. That's for sure. Tell us another. I was trying to track down these bandits who raided the Neuhof stud farm, and the trail led to Ujitz. I made the acquaintance of the parish priest there. Oh, I've heard some stories about him. Apparently he's quite a character. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. But he does keep his word, and he sure knows how to drink. A typical man of the cloth, eh? I don't know about other priests, but Godwin can booze like a master. So we ended up in the local tavern. What can I tell you? Wine, women and song, you know how it goes. Well, we lost track of time a little, and then the bailiff came barging in and tells us it's past curfew and we're to clear out. Was he on his own? No, he had some men with him. I'm not sure how many. It's all a little blurry. Anyway, we explained to him politely that we had no intention of ending our enjoyment. So, after a bit of discussion with the bailiff, we carried on. Next morning, Godwin was as green as a frog and hardly able to walk. And then he realised he had to say mass. <laughs> That's a show I'd like to see. <laughs> well, he couldn't do it. So he got me to preach the sermon. You? Preaching? You're joking. <laughs> well, I did my best. Of course, I wasn't in great shape myself, so I'm not sure what the flock made of it. <laughs> my word, you're a dark horse. A nice story, but let's just drink. But still, he can also be puritanical about anyway, the drinking. I hope you'll drink with us. We shouldn't be doing that. Doing what? A little friendly game, what'd you say? This. Drinking and eating. This stuff belongs to the people from the mill. You see any people from the mill? They're all shitting themselves with fear 
somewhere in the woods. Leave off the preaching, grab a tankard, and booze like a normal bastard. Or I'll send you back to Radzig in disgrace. Kuno, you should spare a thought for those people, for Christ's sake. First, some brutes come and wreck the place and steal half their supplies, and then their rescuers relieve them of what's left. I am thinking about those people. I'm sure they're grateful. And how better to show gratitude than by putting on a feast? Yeah, I'm sure they'll be overwhelmed with gratitude once they find out you've gobbled up all their winter supplies. Jesus, Henry, you're a real spoil sport. I don't want to spoil your sport, but... But we have to think of those people. Yeah, I know. All right, let us finish our drinks in peace and we'll pack up. But as he watches them leave him behind, he'd have to wonder if the men would hold it against him. Either way, the bandits have been defeated and the mill saved from ransacking. Maybe Henry also managed to save the mill mates and the winter food stores. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.